Reds finished a wild card playoff game away from the playoffs last year, and that was without Ken Griffey. The atmosphere in Cincy, now a far cry from just a few years ago when Marge Schatz's main concern was her dog Shotzi, and the franchise seemed to be on the brink of a small market collapse. As Peter Gammons reports, Ken Griffey's arrival isn't just a beginning. Baseball's finally back in Cincinnati. The homecoming of baseball's Michael Jordan will shatter Reds' records for ticket sales and revenue. Ken Griffey Jr. isn't coming as the foundation. He's building on a team that won 96 games, but not lost on Barry Larkin. He's played on a world champion and a division winner in what is also his hometown. This is the best team offensively by far. Um, on paper, this is probably the best team. We won 96 games last year. We can easily turn that into 100, 100 wins so it, and get into the playoffs at the same time. Griffey loaded his contract with deferred income to allow GM Jim Bowden to pursue much-needed pitching. You don't want to go to a team where half your salary is in one player or he doesn't structure a deal to, to help the ball club out. I mean, you're all in this together. I'm always willing to help the ball club out to get uh, what we need because I want that ring. And unlike most other heralded acquisitions, Griffey isn't being asked to be the game's best player and offer Churchill-esque leadership. His good friend Larkin accepts that mantle. I got the loudest mouth on the team on the baseball field, you know, so uh, I'm going to be critical of whomever and I'm going to be supportive of whomever. And uh, now a new guy coming into a, a new situation uh, may not be comfortable being critical of others, you know, especially a guy as successful as Junior. Junior and Senior have tried to defuse charges that Senior is lurking to soon replace manager Jack McKeon. I look at if we win, Jack deserves to be the manager. And as simple as that. Without Griffey, the Reds last season hit 209 home runs, 10 players in double figures, and outscored their opponents by more runs than the Astros. Dante Bichette, who's averaged 128 RBI the last five years, replaces Greg Vaughn. Sean Casey batted 332. And in Aaron Boone and Eddie Taubenzi, the Reds had the league's most productive seventh and eighth hitters. The bullpen led the majors in ERA and made up for a lack of frontline starters. Rookie of the year Scott Williamson, Danny Graves, and Scott Sullivan piled up innings. There's still great depth with Gabe White and Dennis Reyes, but if Williamson and Sullivan wear down, then pressure will mount on the starters. The biggest question is whether the Reds have enough starting pitching to begin talking about the World Series. Pete Harnish and Denny Nagel are warriors with extensive medical histories. Other starters are qualified advisors to map quests, unless rookie Rob Bell makes a jump from double A. The staff's mandate is clear. I know if I throw strikes, these guys are going to catch the ball behind me. I tell Pokey Reese when we go out on the field, let's go make some magic, Pokey Reese. Griffey and, and Pokey and myself, we're just out having fun. And whatever <laughs> happens, happens. But it should be magic. In Sarasota, Florida, this is Peter Gammons, ESPN. Peter, thank you. Look out for Griffey in the season's first month. He has 40 homers in the last four Aprils. That's 12 more than the next highest total. Last year, the Reds' bullpen led the majors in most categories, and they didn't have to part with Rookie of the Year Scott Williamson in the Griffey deal. Dante Bichette seems to lose power when he's away from Coors Field, and he's now a Red after being traded from Colorado.